Our Bible word is 1 Thessalonians 5 or 17. Pray without ceasing. So here we have Apostle Paul is writing to Christians in Thessalonica. This was during his second missionary journey. He spent time in Thessalonica and there he established a congregation, mostly people with craftsmen, people who worked with their hands. Because Paul also says in the letter, he's also, he worked with his own hands at this time while staying with him. Uh, so most Christians here was people that worked with their hands. Luke gives a bit of a different story, more upper class people. But based on what Paul tells us himself, these were like pe people that he often worked with himself. And he probably also during those times shared the gospel. But he had to leave. He was forced out of Thessalonica. And then he made his way south to this to southern Greece. He came to Athens and eventually to Corinth where he stayed for 18 months. And it was at this time where he wrote the corrugation to Thessalonica. Because he wanted to write to them to say, hello, I miss you. I want to maintain contact with you. Because he was forced to leave. He missed them. And also he heard that they were facing troubles, especially from people in the, in the surrounding city. And he also wants to give them encouragement. And also because some were worried, some of their fellow Christians have died. So Paul wrote also, if you go read, Corinthians 4 to chapter 5, it's what happens to them now if Jesus comes back? What happens to the dead? And then Paul said, well, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then he also encourages them, look about times and seasons, when this will happen. In other words, when Jesus will return, we don't know. Be sons of the day, be sober, be vigilant, be watchful, because God did not appoint us for wrath. And then he also tells them, you now encourage each other with his words. And now we come to our present pericope. And that is chapter 5 verses 12 to 22. And here are fi final instructions that Paul gives to the Christians in Thessalonica. So there's Paul's concern about pastoral care among the people of the church. Verses 12 to 15. And then verse 16 to 12. Paul is there concerned still concerned with the communal behavior within the church. And yeah, he gives a series of imperatives. Imperatives is, in other words, things that they must do. It's an instruction that Paul gives them. So you can also say, see it as an exhortation. But it's a bit like a mother telling her children, eat your vegetables. So it is, or you can also see it as eat your vegetables. So you can see it as an exhortation, encouragement, or also an instruction, a commandment. So Paul gives this series here of exhortations or commandments to people. Do this, do this, do this. For example, he starts there where he says, honor those who are set above you. You know, your leaders. And also other things that he mentions is like be at peace, admonish one another, Help the weak, be patient, do not repay evil for evil. And then verses 16 to 18 is actually a threefold encouragement or instruction to prayer. So we must already start looking at verse 16 where Paul says, Rejoice always. Rejoice, of course you can rejoice in your spiritual mind also, but it also forms part of prayer. And then we come to our Bible word, pray without ceasing. And another part of the prayer is in verse 18. In everything give thanks. Why must they do this? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we can see that there's different parts of prayer. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. Always give thanks. Now Paul, this emphasis to Pray unceasingly. He, he mentioned this often in his letters to believers. For example, already at the beginning of 1 Thessalonians, if we go to Thessalonians 1 verses 2 to 3. We give thanks to God always for you, all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. So this is always kind of connection, prayer with God in one way or another. Also, if we go to chapter 2 verse 13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. And in 3 verses 10, Paul writes, Night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face. 
So, of course, Paul was chased out of Thessalonica. So, Paul says, I've prayed you night and day because I wanted to come back to you and see you. So, it was constantly in his prayers. There's also other parts of scriptures. We go to Romans 12, verses 12. Paul mentions, speaks there of continuing steadfastly in prayer. And in Philippians 4, verses 4 to 6, he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Also in 1 Corinthians 7 verses 5, Paul speaks to married couples that they that they, this, and he assumes that Christians make time for prayer and fasting. So prayer life for Paul is just part and parcel of, of relationship with God, relationship with Christ. This is this exhortation here. So it's part of his imperatives. Verses 16 to 18, you can actually see as a unit together that deals with prayer. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. Why? Paul gives the reason. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 